Alert! 654 Jose. Okay? On nothing. Welcome to Third and Eight, Girl Next Door Radio, brought to you by Vanco Outdoor Power Equipment. Let's get the show started with your hosts, Brandon Adcock and Jason Varner. Chris, hit my music, man. Um, oh, I man, know where this is going. You know absolutely where it's going. Here we go, everybody. <sighs> put padding on. He said put padding on. Butt's Let's about to beat you. Get off my lawn! It's Old Man Mondays with Brandon. Boy, y'all know after last night what was coming. I'm tired of Duke players shitting on 42 years of excellence. Mark and Chris didn't even make it a full minute in. My apologies. You're going to go and let the man who's led the greatest basketball program over the past, hey, four decades, and let him down on his retirement night. You five players, seven players who you played in the game, Mark Wiggins, the Pablo Bancaro, the Wendell Moore, Trevor Moore, uh, yeah, Trevor Keels, Jeremy Roach, and John. Excuse me, Mr. Theo John and A.J. Griffin. You seven players are going in the Duke Hall of Fame for all the wrong reasons. <laughs> That's like showing up, you know what I'm saying, to your dad as the retirement party, bringing his worst enemy to and letting him get jumped in the parking lot. What is wrong with y'all? That's exactly what y'all did to my grandpa, Coach K, on his retirement night. Y'all should be ashamed. I hate to see how many laps he got there running. Quite frankly, though, if I was Coach K, I'd have slapped Hubert Davis in the lineup line. I told my girlfriend last night, I am not made, you know what I'm saying, for sports. I have... Zero. Well, I'm looking swole this week. I have zero lack of sportsmanship. Typically speaking, I do my best. But last night, he had, you you know it's bad that when he got to stand up and say I'm sorry, that was unacceptable. On his retirement night, y'all couldn't get this one game out the way. And you know, matter of fact, it's symbolic. It's symbolic of Coach K's prize freshman let him us and everybody else down once again. He's had one group of phenomenal freshmen: Tyus Jones, Justice Winslow, Grace Nattles, and Okafor. The rest of y'all, very hit or miss. He should have sent you on out and straight into the NBA because I feel like half the players who come to Duke and Kentucky and most of the time Kansas and UNC up until this point are coming as a pit stop going to get a paycheck. And quite frankly, I'm sick of it. I hope, you know, hey, new coach John Charlie reverses the game plan at Duke, starts bringing in some guys who really give a crap about the program. And, I, you know, hey, one more thing too. Carolina, y'all played a hell of a basketball game last night. Y'all come in and everybody on God's green expected y'all just to come in and get trounced. And what did y'all do? Y'all played hard. I don't know who that caveman is who come from Oklahoma, that Brady Manning dude, you know, who looks like the caveman off the Geico commercials. If that honky is open, start walking back to the other end of the court. He he got a jumper like Liver Bird, hair like Liver Bird, and a beard like who knows what. And Baycott, hey, four players last night. 20, 20, 20, 20. That has never happened in UNC history. Boy, they saved that shit for the final night. Dagger in the heart to Duke. That program, 100 years old, and never had, hey, excuse me, four out of their five players score 20. And they saved it, though, to Coach K's retirement. Carolina has been trash all year long. Saved it until Coach K's retirement night. As bad as I hate it, I got to respect it. But Jesus Christ, y'all let the man down on his retirement night. I have never been. I watched this though get bounced two times in the first round. Last night was triple the embarrassment. <laughs> yeah. Triple the like I had to medicate myself just to go to bed last night. Look, sweet man. I hope every Carolina fan wake up tomorrow morning that with herpes, a flat tire, and a dead car battery. I'm sick of y'all too. Go ahead. <laughs> so you know it wasn't going to end well when the average ticket price was like greater than five thousand yeah. dollars. Right. The moment was too big. You know who I blame for that? Coach K. Why do you have to announce your retirement at the beginning of the season? Why do you have to put all that pressure on yourself and your players? I kind of, you know. You did the right. That, that's what I'm talking about. His game was over years ago. And yeah. this is another example of a stupid decision by him. You put all of this pressure on those yeah. players. I mean, I agree. That's stupid. I agree. You know what I'm saying? That's something agree. <laughs> That is so st- you know what? You you can't get mad at the players. You can't be like they're going to go into the Hall of Fame for you know all the wrong reasons because they let down Coach K. No, yeah, they, they didn't. They played like freshmen. Yeah, I mean that too. That happens. Yeah, but nobody still, was that, nobody that was, was saying that when they went into Carolina and beat them by twenty and beat them by twenty. Anybody yeah, you I had every that. Duke player still. Alive, yeah, it, invited in the house, tickets five thousand dollars plus for a basketball game. It was the celebrities last everywhere. home game yeah. the coach would ever have, and all of that was of his own creation. It didn't have to be that way. And now, for the entirety of what life you have remaining, and for the rest of our lives, Brandon, and for the rest of any Duke fan's life here on out, 
till the end of time, Carolina's going to get to say, well, our coaches won on their last on their last hurrah. Yeah. Well, they nobody knew they were retiring. Yeah, yeah that's true, true. Yeah, that was no They weren't like, even good enough to give $5,000 plus tickets. Yeah, like, I woke up <laughs> at a surgeon and was like, oh, Roy Wiggins retired? Yeah, nobody like, I cared. I had, yeah, like, I thought I had died and went like, to heaven. Roy's a nice guy. Going. Nobody yeah. cared. Dean yeah. Smith, nice guy. Nobody really cared. Everybody cared Coach K. Was going, guess what? He was the greatest coach of all time, hands down, no questions asked. The problem yeah. is this retirement come three years too late. Yeah. It you come three years too late. I said it. You know what? Yeah. I said this Last a year, year ago, yeah. and you laughed at me. Now, I do want to point out, the whole season hadn't been a wash. No, it hadn't been a wash, yeah. but that, he did this to himself, and this is another mental slip. Yeah. It's a mental slip. Why would you do yeah. it that way, Honestly, man. to me, though, the mental slip is when Carolina, they kept putting the ball screen right in the middle of the floor, and, uh, hey, Baycott rolled to the bucket, and Mark Williams backed up to R.J. Davis and Kevin Love to drive by whoever – Scrub defender was gone them at the time. You want to know and why? If the big man stepped up, they just dunked it off. You want to know it's why? It's the most basic basketball play in the history exactly. of basketball. You, and it beat the best coach. Six. Yeah. I mean. We try honestly, to run it with, with seven and eight-year-olds. It's, it's the most unguardable basketball play to some degree if ran correctly. And Carolina last night just – I think Carolina just come in and was like, you know what? You got nothing to lose. Yeah, I got nothing to lose. You Playing can't, house money. Yeah, you can't, you can't cage an animal like that. And that's what they did by doing everything that led up to that yeah. moment. You caged that animal. Then you went in their court, home court and you beat the bricks off of them, which made yeah. it even worse. You had to know there was some repercussion. At, at some point, a remittance was going to have to be made. Yeah. Right? Man, I, and it came last night. It came at the wrong time. As Sir Isaac Newton always said, if it can happen, it will it happen. Will happen. And Duke, it happened. Yeah, that's not Newton Law. It's Duke Law. <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> Yeah, if something bad can happen, it's going to happen. I mean, and quite Good. frankly, nice. outside of all of that, you take all of that aside, what more do you expect to Duke basketball? This has been Duke basketball for the last 10 years. Be, well, I ain't going to say 10. Ever now, since we got a, four. Ever since we got away from bringing in players Growing and developing dudes. that we can develop and grow, yeah. that aren't going to leave us after one year, yeah. that don't go to the NBA and make a fool out of us. Here's a good example. Reddick, grown, developed. Went to the NBA, played well in the NBA, good character, good representative of a team. That was the that was the classic Duke player. Then comes the Zions of Yo, the I world. Think JJ Reddick and Shedden Williams, like now, post Christian Leitner, like that was peak Duke basketball. Peak Duke basketball. But then but now, like, now you look at it. Yeah, oh, oh, I agree. Zion like, never went away. You know, one year, one year leaves. Goes to the NBA, makes a fool out of himself, yeah. treats his fellow teammates like he's better than all of them, even though they in the NBA too. Yeah, that, that, That's the new image of yeah. new basketball. Yeah. We got to get away from that. Yeah. Hopefully, John Shire is the man to do it. So, to Carolina fans, oh. Miss Harrington, uh, Ayanna Bagley, and your mom and dad who played basketball for me at the high school, I already sent y'all y'all's text message saying congratulations. I wasn't even mad because well, I, I knew it was coming. I didn't even respond last time. You was about midway at halftime, and people started texting me, yo, Duke going to blow this game. And I was like, I'm not responding. And then with about a minute left in the game, I hit the medicine cabinet and went to bed. <laughs> yeah, man. I couldn't take it no more. But how fitting, man. Like, just just how. Well, uh, look, go God, out. Here's, here's so what bad. you can do. The Here's only what you thing can do to fix do, it. Go win ACC, a national championship. ACC and Natty. He, he's got to go. Go win it. I don't even care I, about the ACC championship. Nobody I cares can, about that crap yeah. anymore. That, hey, That's what I'm about to say. The ACC championship went away 10 years ago, too. People stopped caring. Nobody yeah. cares. Go win the national or it don't matter. Yeah. Or go lose the Lehigh again. Yeah, because Duke wins ACC <laughs> tournament. Hey, nobody cares. Georgia Tech win it. National news. Right. Cause well, you know, I mean? you know what? And they deserve to be on national news. But we yeah. a caliber team that Duke is. You should just be expected to be in first yeah. or second at all times and be competing for the national championship. That hurt it, man. It didn't hurt me. You know what? That hopefully it's a it's a lesson learned. Don't be stupid. Don't be stupid. And next time, Coach K, if you get there to coach again yeah, in your next, next life, retire at the right time. Yeah. And do so the right way. Stop trying to make it all about yourself, you narcissistic dummy. <laughs> hey, props to you. Props to me yeah. for not saying yeah, cut it. yourself off. I'm proud of you. Yeah. That's my old man money. Yeah, there you go. Jesus yeah. Christ. Well, that was a tough loss to take, man. I'm telling you. I'm so- yeah. yeah. 
I missed a week, baby. I come back prepared. <laughs> I swear to God, if Duke does not win the ACC tournament mm. and at least make the Final Four, this is the most disappointing team. In you know what you did last night, though? It, it, when you really look at it, when you break it down, and I ain't even going to get into the basketball of it because – Look, I'm not a basketball expert. I mean, I could break down what I saw in the game, but it's a it's a lengthy way of just filling air. What I want to do though is what we did is gave Carolina their ticket to the national NCAA. championship tournament. Yeah, I agree. No, because because if they that, lost that game, probably unless they won the championship, yeah. ACC championship, they weren't going to the tournament yeah. for the first time in a long time. And boy, can we have laughed in. But now. Regardless of what happens in this tournament, yeah, hands down, we they could, gonna get an invitation. We could beat them in the ACC tournament championship and by I still, eighty. Yeah, I'm talking. Yeah, like by eighty. Perfect example. And I would still not be as happy as if we won last night. Yeah. Well, it happens. Lesson me, learned. It makes me sick to my fat gut. Lesson learned. <sighs> Moving on. What's next, Brandon? Probably a nervous breakdown to keep it a buck, which <laughs> I'll be honest with you. Probably, probably a nervous breakdown. This has not been a very good weekend for me. <laughs> well, now, I did hear, I did overhear you talking. So, full disclosure, on the show, we have newly acquired health freaks. Um, <laughs> right? I don't think I, that's fair. We haven't had a chance to talk about this. At least I haven't. Y'all might have talked about it. I haven't, so I'm going to get it off my chest. Okay. So I'm the only normal one left. You know, I eat my donuts. I eat my cookies. I drink my sodas. You know the difference? And I don't care. No one can tell. I don't yeah, care. You know <laughs> you know I mean? Me and Chris been doing that since we were in the womb. <laughs> like, yeah. so, we but, wear it. But yeah. for like the past month, I've watched my friends, right? Okay, here they go. Brandon endures a surgery, right? Comes out of the surgery and now has to go to the gym and work out every day and starve himself as if the, you know, like he's preparing for like, you know, for some Zombie apocalypse, so he likes that Probably hardcore, too. and he's tracking. He's like, today I've lost one point two pounds and three quarters of an inch off my waist, and hey, then oh, which I could gain it elsewhere. I thought it, and then, and, and now it's <laughs> hey man, I'm, I'm up to this low rate high rep in the gym, boy, and yeah. I got like a half a centimeter definition in my arms, and I'm like. You care about definition, What's up, baby? <laughs> Take me out to dinner. <laughs> we're th- we're in our thirties. We can't care hey, about definition. <laughs> like, no carb dinner though. What's up? What's and, happening with you? <laughs> just, I thought maybe you know. I'm thinking. All right, you know. Every once in a while, midlife crisis has happened. This is my friend going through his midlife crisis. Your mind happened in fifteen. It, it happens. Jeez, <laughs> we're coming close. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fingers crossed. Yeah, uh, and then. <laughs> exactly. He so was a Chris, good man, ladies and gentlemen. He's I a wasn't. good man. Hey, don't let him lie to you. Everybody raise your hot dogs up and eat them in his arm. <laughs> you know, he was a good guy. Oh, that's so wrong. <laughs> He's a good hey, guy. Full loss, extra so chili. Wrong. <laughs> Tell him if he didn't have one more, it wouldn't have happened this way. Nah, but then you got you got Brandon, right? All serious. He's in it. He's in it to win it. And I'm proud of him. He's changed his life for the better. He feels good about himself. I'm all good with it. But then he done, he's contagious. Because the next thing I know... Here comes Chris, and he comes over to my house, and he sits down on my table to have a meal. I pull out the cookie wrappers. I'm like, hey, man, would you like to have a double fudge round like normal? <laughs> this is the way we spend our evenings. And he's like, nah, man, I'm, I'm on this uh, keto diet. Yeah. Like, what? Ow. What is that? <laughs> like, what? Is that a new form of karate? Like, what are you doing? And it, wrong with your toes? Like, what are you uh, talking I think about? it's Japanese for I hate myself. Yeah. <laughs> now, he can't have any bread. Or when he does have bread, he has to pay $1.28 a slice. <laughs> he can't have, you know, like, pastas, no rice. No, I'm looking at him like, well, first you put me in a predicament because I eat all of those things. And now I just have to, like, eat them and either choose to eat them and feel sorry for you because I'm having to eat them in front of you or not eat them, which I've t- I'll just be full. I'm not doing that because he already comes over to my house and we have to change the temperature from a normal 72 down to 65. It's gotten to better. It's gotten better. <laughs> so, but, yeah, these guys are doing it, though, man. Now, now we come up. I missed hold last on, week. Hold on. I want to uh, point something out. What? It's fine for you to eat those things. The difference is... I ate your 35 years worth of carbs and pasta in somewhere around 10. Well, <laughs> okay. Preach on. <laughs> like, I, here's the cool thing. You though. spread it out appropriately. I'm a competitive guy. I don't like to lose in anything, and I love to see other people compete. And now, 
These two jokers are going at it, bro. It's like every day they come up. I'm at point seven today. What you at, bro? <laughs> hey, I lost points. Look, no <laughs> lie. So I weighed myself Friday morning. I was like, I lost point six pounds yesterday. Let's let's go. Let's go. I was, hey, hey, I, I was hyping look, everything. Look, I'm so serious about it. I will not weigh myself until I have my morning business. Done. Yeah. <laughs> hey, yeah, hey, yeah. Be, hey, honest to God, get naked. <laughs> I'm business, getting every weight, point out of this. Honest to God. <laughs> I'll tell you, man. Strip. I, Business, <laughs> weight, shower, every morning like clockwork. So I 100% know where you're coming from. Now, Chris is losing weight at a, a tad bit like faster clip than I am. No, but he's not lifting weights. I am. Uh-huh. And so yeah, I do so want to point out. Muscle yeah, in, so like. Alternate. I yeah. can st- but I hate here. both of y'all. Chris because gonna look better than mine right now, and I don't like it. Yeah, because I'm, like, I'm all I'm on this. I said your uh, gut is in oh better shape than mine. Yeah, yeah. but I tucked it in my pants. I, I'm on the thread. I'm on the text thread, and they know how competitive I am, and they're going back and forth. Well, point seven, point eight. I'm at three thirty. I'm down thirty pounds over the past six months. I'm like, the only thing I'm down is like thirty cookies. <laughs> you know, like you did the even, entire thing of Girl Scout cookies did. the other day. Hey, now, what kind? Hey, look, two cases. Oh, I ordered ones. two cases. Does it matter? Two weeks ago. Yeah, but they're not all good. That's true. Uh, the peanut butter delight, uh, the Chris, the, well, it's like the uh, Reese cups, but with, you know, like yeah, the cookie. Those are right. good. <laughs> or if it had been the coconut ones, we'd have had a problem. Hey, Those are the best ones. Nah, yes, no, I disagree. It's these, but we had two well, cases of them <clears throat> with twelve boxes in each. <clears throat> two weeks later, I'm here to report Wait, to you. You bought two cases. Two cases. Okay, I thought he meant boxes. So he you had twenty four boxes. Cases. Yes, I have one one box left. And who all has partaken for the most part of said? First of all, boxes? me. Yeah, does your wife and kids know that they're at the house? <laughs> yes, because my girlfriend Alex do doesn't really like them because they got peanut, peanut butter, butter in them. Yeah, I can see that. Legan doesn't like them because they they're got crunchy. peanut butter, oh. and Amber is on this health kick with everybody else. So. For what? I don't know. But you know what? You know what that means? That means I had two cases of cookies. Now, to be fair, I had one box. uh, I was down to two boxes. I I shared a box with a table uh, at game night last week. Uh, But to be fair, nobody ate any of them but me. But I didn't want to be rude, so I left two cookies out of the 15 there, this, just in case. Look, he broke out some peanut butter M and M's uh, the other day, or yesterday. I that whole bag, oh, oh, I, good. dude. I was so mad. <laughs> they are one carb and fifteen calories. A piece. a piece, yes. a piece, a piece. I'm yes. like, what in? The, He's over here. Look, okay. Yeah. This is when I knew it was serious. Him and Stephanie's like, can you pull out three? <laughs> For us to share, and here I am with like two handfuls, hey, like, and then cut the <laughs> last one in half. <laughs> I would, so I would make fun of him though, but I did the same thing yesterday with a donut. I'm like, can you cut it in half? My girlfriend was like, half, half, half. half. that's sacrilegious, bro. Yeah. Half. She was, Anyways, she was think about half. half. <laughs> Talking about taking breaks and halves of things. We got to take a break real quick because we're up on the break point. Thank you, Vanco Outdoor Power Equipment, for sponsoring this hour third night here on Next Door Radio and NextDoorRadio.com. It's good to be back. I miss you. My shoulder's still hurting. I guess that's. That's the price I pay for eating all them cookies. But when we return, Brandon and I is going to take a quick look at some picks that we made last year for breakout players to see how we did. And we're going to go ahead and start uh, making predictions for who those breakout players are going to be in 2022. That's all coming back when we get back. In the meantime, check out these sponsors, check out these commercials, and go to our website, www.americanpodtalk.com or www.thirdnate.com and pick out some merch, baby. Don't call me. Don't text me unless your house on fire. So the back door is open. Go. It looks like it's something to shoot it up, barbecue, and spit it back into the air. Well, it ought to be nice and soft for you, bitches. Yeah. Hey, this old boy. You don't see me running marathons because I know my limits. Third and eight is back. Hey guys, welcome back here to Third and Eight on Next Door Radio, nextdoorradio.com. He unlikes Duke Freshman. Now we come back in the second half and do it in our hand of business how we supposed to. Wow. <laughs> Still bitter about it. So <laughs> wrong. I ain't forgot you. He ain't mad or nothing. Wow. Yeah. Anyway. Did it cost you money on a parlay ticket or something? No. I, okay. Look, so I checked the bet yesterday. If I bet 100 on Duke to win, yeah, but I would have won $12. 
I would have also in turn lost a hundred dollars in me three times as mad as I actually was last night <laughs> if I post game to begin with. How much would you want if you bet Carolina to win? I did not check $1, that. Twelve hundred bucks? Probably. Some close to it. Yeah, he didn't want to hate himself completely. Yeah. I'd have felt better about it if I won money on it. Oh, I wouldn't give one crap if I won over a grand on that game. I'm like, mm, thanks, <laughs> Apple, baby. Thank you, Uncle. Yeah, yeah. appreciate you know sending my next two truck payments. Hey, on the house. Hey, so, good day to be here. <laughs> last year, this time, we made some predictions on who we thought was going to be the breakout players of the year in the yep. NFL. And so, we'll, per your request, we want to kind of look back at those predictions and see how well we did. Okay. Now, now here, now to be fair, I didn't do my homework, so I hope you brought I did. the predictions we made. Okay, yeah, good, because I did. Cause I did. <laughs> All right. Yeah, okay. So, and I don't remember yeah. for the most part. I remember <laughs> I was probably wrong, but that's um, the ordinary, you know. If I like, so me and you were about even. Okay. Oh well, hey, that's a win it. for me. Okay, now put it this way: our first pick for both of us knocked it out of the park, a hundred percent accurate on our biggest breakout thirty years. Justin Herbert. No. Matthew Stafford. Matthew Stafford. Okay. I thought you Me, were going to say Trevor Lawrence. I'm sorry. No. no um, you don't. He did make Jason's list. <laughs> don't you talk about him like that. But uh, He's back up. Well, never mind. He's Go what? Ahead. Back up to who? Shut your mouth. Just listen to it. Anyway, Go ahead. Mm-hmm. Tell us who we pick. First yeah, breakout friend, player is Matt Stafford. Well, yeah, he was on number one. Oh, no, I'm going to start at number five. Okay, start at number five. All right. It you was sure Najee was? Harris. Najee Harris up. Yeah, well, he had 10 touchdowns and... You know, 1,200 yards rushing and 500 yards receiving. Not a bad freshman year. Yeah, that's pretty good. Your first one, that was Gardner Minshew. You can take on that. That's my take on it. (laughs) (laughs) It's like, well. And you know what? That was spicy. Uh, In his defense, I thought Gardner Minshew was going to beat out Jalen Hurst for that starting job. All signs indicated after they traded for him. You know what I'm saying? They're basically, you know, hey, just appease Trevor Lawrence. He's a better quarterback than Jalen Hurts. I ain't going to lie about it. I think he's better than Trevor Lawrence, too. <laughs> Currently. It, it anyway. don't take much. Mm. I don't think, he's, he's I don't think anybody been Lawrence. successful under old lap dance, but go ahead. Best oh, was, was it too far, Coach? Level? <laughs> yeah, she did all right. Technically, he was under her. Yeah. You're right. I see you. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Chris is over there doing fractions. Who? It was two over one. It was one over two over here. <laughs> He one's a going, half, one's a whole. Yeah, hey, you know, hey, it's 2022. Anything can happen. What? Let's go. Garner Minshew. What is, <laughs> Chris it's science. Uh, Chris uh, tickled himself over there. That was a good one. Hit the dig again, Chris, because if anybody caught that, that was beautiful. I'm proud of you growing up. <laughs> <sighs> My second breakout player of the year uh, was Cortland Sutton. Um, he had injuries and Drew Locke and Teddy Bridgewater as his quarterback. So uh, I, I may have missed a mark on that. Um, I, yeah. A touch. Yeah, well. You know what I'm saying? I think injuries did play a major Worry not. I said Garner miss you, so you get a free one, worried. too. Yeah, well, not that Garner miss you wouldn't have been a breakout player. Yeah. He just never got the opportunity. So, I mean, he didn't have a bad year. He had 800 yards. You know, I'll show just a couple touchdowns. But, I mean, it's not the breakout year I thought it was going to be for um, – Yeah, it's solid Sutton. number two, number three. Yeah. And your second guy, it was Montez Sweat. Okay. I will – let's talk through this. Okay. Now – Hey, take your time. He, I'm in a rush. Yeah. I didn't have the mental capacity at the time, for whatever reason, to fully understand what was about to happen in Washington. They were switching the defense over from a three-man front to a four-man front and moving Montez Sweat from the right to the left and Chase from left to right. I didn't think about this in the time it would take to be adjusted. Now, by the end of the season, those boys were were doing well. They finally got it, and I fully expect that this year it's going to be a really good year. Um, but, you know, that that's the sort of things you – that's the difference between me and somebody that has 14 agents calling me and the coaches on my you know my speed dial and, um, and being an influencer. This I didn't take that into consideration, that this change was coming. They announced it two weeks later. So, shame on – you know, shame on me. You still have five sacks. You know what I'm saying? 11 assists and 24 combined tackles, which isn't a – No, no. It's a good year. Bad year. Good year you know, for what five, they asked him to do. Yeah. Hey, they're asking him to be – the number two DN. See, they're asking him to be, uh, you know, the anvil and Chase to be the hammer. Personally, with his 4 4 one I think Montez Sweat is the better pass rusher. He's faster, t- at just as tall, just as physical, even a little bit larger, stat, you know – width wise in the body, shoulder wise, he's a little bit bigger. I think he should be the hammer on that four man front. 
and let Chase be the back end guy that's cl- that's getting you know the tackles rushed to him. Instead, they want Chase chasing, which I don't fully understand. But that that's okay. Maybe they've worked out the kinks. It's all good. Next pick. Out of my number three pick for a breakout party last year, it was coach receiver Michael Pittman. I feel like yeah. this is another one I kind of hit on the head a little bit. Eighty eight catches, a thousand eighty two yards, and eight touchdowns. He had a good he had a good quarterback. Hey, not eight six. I apologize. Yeah, he had a good quarterback. Uh, not a great quarterback. Good quarterback. Who I hope we keep. That I think you guys would be stupid, and we could talk about that later. Not to keep. Yeah, but I agree. Yeah. Now nah, did well. Who's mine? Now Justin Jefferson, who uh had a great year again. Was, and I said this on the show last year, though. This time, it's so hard to replicate the rookie year he had. He had a great quarterback helping him, but he actually increased everything. Mm-hmm. He had 108 catches, and that was um he up from 88. He had uh, let's see. Yeah, but 10 touchdown catches as opposed to seven. Mm-hmm. So he kind of went, and that's crazy because his breakout year, his rookie year was, oh, my God, and then somehow he improved and nobody talked about it. Now, I'm going to tell you, new offense coordinator, well, <laughs> new head coach coming to Minnesota, offensive-minded coach, I think it's going to be even better. It's going to be even better you because know, when they go to the spread, it's not going to be going to the spread for just to go to the spread. When they start opening up <laughs> the spread game, it's going to have, you know, logical – since for the plays is about to be called, I think Mike Zimmerman and his offense corner at the time was just, they would go to spread just to keep people honest. Yeah. And when they were there, they didn't really have a game plan fully fledged out. You would see production drop in the spread until it was the last five minutes of the fourth quarter. Yeah. And it became a two-minute offense type drill, which, again, there was purpose behind it. This, with the new head coach, I think you're going to have purpose behind the spread throughout the game. <clears throat> The production's not going to drop. I think Minnesota's going to find themselves the top of that division, especially if Aaron Rodgers leaves. Yeah, if Aaron Rodgers leaves. Um, if Aaron Rodgers but, stays, it's going to be tough. It's going to be Rodgers tough. Leave. It's yeah, going to be so. tough. It's Aaron Rodgers. But I do think they're even better position, especially if they could get a little. They've got a, a good second back now to help replace Cook when he gets his injuries because he's going to get his if, injuries. It's win. Yeah, 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 win. It's not so, if, it's win. Uh, yeah, I, I, good pick by me, that one. Yeah. Um, the my next one was Sam Donald. This is my take on that. <laughs> Mine was safe Moving on, yeah. miss you. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Sam Donald was atrocious, but, and this is something I've told Carolina fans the entire offseason, you cannot put fancy rims on a beat-up car and reset a car for twice the value. Yeah. The car itself needs to be redone. And the quarterback is a paint job. If the car is bad... The whole team is bad. And right now, that team is bad on the offensive line. That is the one thing that protects the quarterback, that helps the run game, that helps the overall entire offense is those five guys. They got, I don't know, maybe one guy who's really worth a crap in moat, and then maybe Brady Christensen, who's the rookie last year, who played all five spots. At Look, times. Well, I'll he be, play center, I don't think. I'll be honest with you. Both tackles. Sam Darnold looked just as good or as bad, you're, you determine, as he did in New York because it's basically the same team. With J.C. Horn out and Christian McCaffrey out, they're the same team as the Jets. They had Bro, with Adam Gase. Jason, I want you to read these stats. Now read that line right there, and then read that yeah, one. You read I it. Can't, Go ahead. No, I can't because I can't believe I'm looking at that. Look, now I, he said he's the same guy with the Jets as he was. He's with the, the same guy. Listen to these stats. Panthers, 2021, 59.9 percent completion. 2,527 yards, nine touchdowns, 13 interceptions, 71.9 quarterback rating. With the Jets, 59.6 completion, 2,208 yards, nine touchdowns, 11 interceptions, 72.7 quarterback rating. Jesus it's Christ. The same. Look, and, and he, that's it's not like even a my point. Image. It's not even my That ain't even the point I was getting to. Because you couldn't see the screen. So I was no. Like, hey, that, look at this. Make sure my eyes, like all four I, my eyes are working. I watched him play in New York. I watched him play in Carolina. And I had no idea what his stats were. But with watching him play, I knew what he was basically the same quarterback. Here's <clears> the problem. <throat> it's not Sam Darnold. <clears throat> the problem in New York was Adam Gase. The problem in Carolina Matt Rule. is Matt Rule. If this doesn't help indicate that, I'm not saying it's the end-all, be-all indicator, but it's a daggone good indicator that when you bring a quarterback into a different system and he produces the same amount, the problem is the people coaching him. Yeah. 
The problem is the people coaching him. He's got now, a really bad draw twice. I'll, now, I'll be honest with you. If McCaffrey would have been healthy, J.C. Horn would have stayed healthy on the defensive side. He would have been a little bit more productive because yeah. he would have had a little less pressure on him. Yeah. And if the, But even then, all that would have done was hide the bad coaching. Carolina would do themselves a favor to part company with Matt Rule right now. But the owner of North Carolina is a narcissist jerk. And he's a rich dude that thinks he's better than everybody. He'd come down to the South, and he was going to lead us away. He was the next great hope from the North and the South. And guess what? You ain't, bro. You don't know what you're doing. You proved it with your coaching hire. I No love for hey, Carolina. You guys kind of put a uh, grand and burning everything. No, no, that was Sherman. <laughs> And burning it yeah, down. He, so that's that. exactly what he's doing. I'm he's burning sure, it all to the yeah, ground. He's sure he's marching all through Carolina yeah. Stadium right now. It's, Good it's, God. Dude, and then you're going to have the, ner- the nerve to say, we need a new stadium and the fans need to pay for it. Yeah, you who, need a new offensive line, bro. Who do you, line, bro, who do you, you think pay pays for it, for it bro? Yeah. Who do you think pays for your stadium? Yeah, like I did a whole Old Man <laughs> Monday segment on this dude last year about this time. Like He come out and said, I'm like, bro, you just got here, first of all. Second of all, how about you put a win in? Because yeah. I will say this, to some degree, Carolina fans are extremely loyal. Yeah, they are. They will go to that stadium. Ridiculously and that team, so. That team has been trashed for a majority of my lifetime. I mean, outside, of, you know what I'm saying, a couple of good seasons by Cam and a couple of good ones, you know what I'm saying, by Jake. Jake Gahom. But <laughs> that, so they had Jimmy Clausen in between. They've had yeah. Sam Darnold. They've had, um, you know, hey, um, hey, refurb Cam Newton come back. Yeah. You no. know, they put up with a lot in Carolina. Yeah. But I feel like if you're going to come in and demand a stadium – you should come in and demand an offensive line. Yeah. And those fans that should come in. You know, demand a winning season. Not even excellence. Just demand some relevancy, for God's sakes, because that's all it takes here in Carolina. You don't got to be good. You just got to be above 500 and not put a trash product on the field week out, uh, excuse me, week in and week out, uh, made for season ticket holders. Them two, and they can't even look, manage to do that. Him and Rule are two two peas in a pod, boy. They both like to point the finger at everybody else. Matt Rule, I'm going to fire everybody I, I on my say, staff. Matt Rule fired the whole staff. Matt <laughs> yeah. was like, well, you can't blame me no more. It was my staff. Bro, you – Yeah, what? okay. <laughs> Usually when the company's doing bad, you know who everybody You're supposed at. to coach the coaches, bro. You got to set the tone. You got to make them better so that they can make the players better. That's your job. Yeah. And That's your go, job. Hey, you should rely you on them. in this house. A great big phony. <laughs> That's much. right. That's a right. A lives here. A big fat phony. Go go back to college ball. Oh, and this time, go to a program that's not Baylor. Or some somewhere like that. Go to a, a truly struggling uh, school that doesn't have great a great winning, history of winning, that doesn't have all the top picks in the United States, and let's see you win. He did with Temple, and that's how he got the middle job. But a college not really. Two different things. Temple's not a horrible team. Yeah. I mean, they're not great. Though, but they're, they're not, not horrible. a horrible team, like, bro. I'm he, saying, like, go to Duke. And win. That would be impressive. <laughs> go to Duke and win, bro. Yeah. That, that'd be impressive. <laughs> Anybody doing that is going to impress me. <laughs> you know, I mean? you know, like, hey, like, Coach Cutcliffe is like, you know, he going to the Duke Hall of Fame, and we barely say about 500. <laughs> <laughs> like he get a statue out there to watch us way, but no, like he did something crazy during the offseason that Matt Rule did, where he hired a guy in Ben McAdoo, who's going to oh. be his new offensive coordinator. He also interviewed oh. Ben McAdoo though when he was hired and didn't see fit to have Ben McAdoo be his quarterback coach. And so you mean to tell me that he got two years off the NFL and is now all of a sudden qualified to lead your entire offense? Mm. All that is 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 he wants somebody he can be like that was him, mm. not I, bro. That was him. And Ben McAdoo, <laughs> he's a great escape goat. Yeah. I'm done. No, I'm not even nothing. wasting another breath. Go- okay. All right. Er, next. Okay. Your ne- <laughs> I hate you, Chris. Your next breakout player was Justin Herbert. Hey! Right again. And he, uh, his touchdowns increased, his yardage increased, and his interceptions increased. I think, you know, how, like all that's due to him having a coach who's offensive mind. And you, hey, and you got to, and you're in your second year when you're supposed to regress as a quarterback. Yeah. And he, he did great. 38 touchdown yeah. passes. Great job. So who would you rather have, like, right now? Teams being equal, like, not on their current teams, but you could build a team on either guy. Who would you take, Herbert or Burrow? Mm. It depends on who was around them. Like, if you had really cocky receivers, I'd go with Herbert because Herbert's just kind of cool, calm, and collected. Yeah. But if you had a team that was really good but they just weren't vocal – if they were more cool, common collected, I'd want Burrow because he's like, you know, Moxie. 
But I think him and Burrow, both, Burrow and, and Herbert both have got just phenomenal futures. Oh, oh 100%. Dude, I absolutely. can't wait. Like, absolutely. there is not going to be – with Burrow, Mahomes, Herbert, Allen, Allen oh. Jackson, Kyler Murray, even though he's acting like a little kid right now. Well, he is a little kid. What do you <laughs> want him to do? <laughs> <laughs> like – there is going to be some really good football. And like I'm telling you, like, it's so crazy how sports works itself out. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know, hey, everybody was worried when Breeze, Tom. Yeah, Peyton, how did it happen? That yeah. you got this generation then, come back. They're just like, you know, these guys are going to have equally as impressive arms. Oh, God. But yeah. they're big and they're and faster fast. than their D linemen now. And they're yeah. faster than some of their running backs. Until this cases. year when you see those O linemen running four eight forties and you're like, Boy, hey, can we what? touch on that real briefly? Jeez. What is on the turf in Lucas Oil Stadium? How about man? Georgia? Why can't the coach player use it? Jesus yeah. Christ. God, bro. Dude, four eight forty as an O lineman? Jordan Davis is a six six, three forty one. <laughs> hey, look at his 40 time. Hey, 4 7 8. Yeah, dude, give the guy four, a football. Can't, just seven, hand him the football. Put that man in fullback. Put you him in the goal line. I was going to say, you know what's bad? You know what's bad? What, the, full the days back. of the fullback. Full full when you got 364 pound man running 4 7 40, it's time to go back to the wishbone. Hey, 4 7 8 40. Just a don't. 10 3 broad jump. God, dude. And a 32 inch vertical. You know what this means? First round pick, guaranteed. Uh, well, He's going to be picking the top five. I'm, gonna be, I'm just going to be straight up honest with you. The days of players like Kyler Murray are about to come to an end. Because you can play like that and be that size when you got guys slower than you. Yeah, yeah. Who but when you flat. get 365 Whew. pounds Whew. running 4-7. God almighty. Mm. See, I can run a 4-7 in a 20-yard dash. Good. <laughs> I'm, not even, I'm not even 100% confident. I can run a 4-7 can... if I got a motor in my car. Yeah. <laughs> like, give me a mullet, I might can run one. <laughs> Aerodynamics and whatnot. But, yeah, uh, I had to wear a headband. These ears. Just saying. There was a notice. Yeah, would they push reduction. you back or push you forward, though? It depends on which way the wind's blowing, brother. So you get, wind with, drag. you get with the wind, yeah. you're going to you come off the ground. The fuck's going to thank you, Jesus Christ. Yeah. You're just going to hover. Jet stream effects. <laughs> yeah, when I'm running against the wind, I try to turn my head down so it slices. But when I'm running with the wind. It doesn't make wind, like a whistling noise. Oh, you hear it. You hear me coming, buddy. Thank that. <laughs> <laughs> that ain't right, man. We should leave you alone. I was yeah, born I, with him, baby. <laughs> I mean, maybe he's born with it, though. Maybe it's Maybelline. Hey, but somebody, yeah. Some people have bellies. I have ears. You know what I mean? Well, lucky Go. you. I know which one I'd rather have because you can't get rid Well, I can't get rid of these. Yeah, that's a good yeah. point. You ain't got to work to get rid of them, though. Me and Chris over here crying. But no, but our first pick, you know, saying the breakout play of the year, hey, both of us had Matthew Stafford. And I don't feel like they well. got any more accurate on that one. He did well. Um, yeah, top two in the league. In the only way passes. we could have been better is to say Joe Burrow. Or, I don't know. The Cooper Cup. Coop, probably well, the other one that yeah, I but feel Cooper like, Cup was already great and just didn't have anybody to help him show how great he was. Yeah, he's yeah. been this good since college. I agree wholeheartedly, wholeheartedly. You know, like, I watched that guy, guy do workout videos, Brandon. Oh yeah, yeah ever since day me. one. Yeah, and it's like, yeah, he's, he's amazing. The, he told uh, there was one of his college teammates. Um, he plays for the Patriots. Uh, Born. Um, he's a wide receiver, and him and Kendrick Born. Uh, we're talking back and forth, and he was like, yo, you're more talented than I am. I just work twice as hard as you do. And I was like, as a teammate, I'm not quite sure how offended I'd be by that because if you're like, you're better than me, bro, but I'm going to outwork you at every step of the way. He means it. I'm you, just trying to figure out. You can't out. call the man a liar because it's not what, like I'll be real honest with you. You know what I'm trying to figure out? What? How he made it past Bill Belichick's binoculars. Oh, boy, did you see Bill Belichick uh, hey, eyeballing that white slot receiver from Alabama? He going to the Patriots Hall of Fame uh, next year, here son. Come. Next year, you already just just go ahead and get his gold jacket. Uh, I found him. I Good. found him. <laughs> boy, he been looking. Um, yeah, he yeah. been trying to find his next grocery checkout clerk since Danny and Mandola left. All right. So, there you had it. We we made it from five down to one. We yep. didn't do too bad. Like, Not what, too what bad. about 60% accurate, something so like you that? Were, uh, Three out of five, and yeah. so was I. Eight yeah, sixty percent. Not bad, not bad. Let's try to improve upon that. Let's be breakout predictors this year, Brandon. When we get back, we got to do that. We got to make those selections. So let's see if we can increase upon the thirty percent or sixty percent accuracy rate we was at. Thank you, Vanco Outdoor Power Equipment, for sponsoring this hour of Third Night here on Next Door Radio at NextDoorRadio.com. Pardon me, I've been drinking. When we get back, we're going to make those picks. In the meantime, you guys check out our merch at www. .thirdnate.com
Nobody's gonna touch that one, boy. It's like me on Prime. Like, yeah, I'm not gonna turn it because me turning is like the movie point on Earth, and I just ain't got time for all that. Ooh. Yeah, give me something I, I can like say. Game show's now on the ball before the five points up for grabs. I would just leave my headset on the table and leave. Third and eight is back. Hey guys, welcome back here to Third and Eight on Next Door Radio on NextDoorRadio.com. If Duke basketball had a third quarter, hey, like we got, they probably wouldn't show up for that either. Anyway, now me and Jason had, uh, what, Chris? Now me and Jason had a couple honorable mentions, <clears throat> excuse me, they're on our breakout list. Uh, he had a couple guys. One was right and one was wrong. One was Mac Jones. I can see that. He did he, good. One was Trevor Lawrence, and Chris has his own thoughts on that one. And my, yeah. I'm not the only one, but go ahead. Oh, no, not at all. And my breakout player got screwed because he was having a good year in Jameis Winston. He had 14 touchdowns <laughs> and, then and five picks. <laughs> like <Yeah. it> was... <laughs> and then his legs give up. Yeah. His legs was like, no, nah, I'm checking out. Did they Jam- show you his 40 time when they ghosted uh, uh, Winston, Baker Mayfield, and the offensive lineman? And, and Winston got thrashed and ba- Baker Mayfield got thrashed by the O-lineman? Running yeah, <laughs> I saw that. What, what? Yeah, that's your boy. People are <laughs> freaks, man. Like, it's fat when fat dudes are getting fast. Like, I don't, like, I wouldn't even bless with that. I'm just fat. Where was the good old days when you could just be big and play O line? Now you got to be big around 4 7. Big, agile, fast. God. Yeah, that's insane. I'm out. All right. You had me at big, lost me at fat. <laughs> I said, and agile. So, last year, it looks like we were 60%. Okay. Let's try to improve upon that this year. Okay. That way, we can be. Taken to ESPN. No. I think if we get to 100%, they'll call. And that's better than half their people. I, I mean, I will way. say, they're running with people like, what's it, Ian Rappaport and, yeah. and all those other guys that is nonsensical, but whatever. Let's just get, hey, we're, I'm going to shoot for 80%. Okay. And then next, that'll leave room for the third year of improvement. Now, way I can say it's <laughs> gradual. And consistent. Yeah, the rookie wall, sophomore slump, yeah. the third year breakout, yeah. right? Well, okay. sophomore slump would say we'd be going backwards. I hope that oh, ain't the case. But fair. I did take some chances, as I'm prone to do. I was going to say, no, not, not you. You taking chances. I've never seen this before. But I'm, you will see I'm some so commonality surprised. between this year's picks <clears throat> and last year's picks and in, in how similar they are to one another. And I'll kick us off. My, way, my number five pick last year was Garner Minshew. Okay. Backup quarterback. I thought I was going to get a second chance. Unfortunately, he didn't get the opportunity. He'll probably get it this year somewhere, and he'll probably do all right. This year, though, I'm not going with Garner Minshew, although I'm probably a year too late. But I am going with another backup quarterback that I think is going to get a second shot, and that's Mitchell Trubisky. I think Moneybag Mitch is poised to make a heck of a comeback. Not even that it's really a comeback. Because he was screwed from the get-go by an ignorant coach. He was winning. He had the team moving in the right direction. Even with horrible play calling by McNaggy. McNaggy. Mr. I ain't got a job no more, Nagy. Uh, finally, I'm out of a job, Nagy. And he was winning with him. And if you can win with him, you can win with just about anybody else in the NFL. So, I think Mitch is going to find a home this year. I think he's going to be a starting quarterback. He might end up in Washington, for all I know. He's very similar. Both our teams. Very similar to uh, to Heine, Heineke in uh, in Washington. To have that one-two punch wouldn't be a bad idea either. Very similar quarterbacks. You wouldn't have to change much uh, with him under center. So, I don't know. I don't know. I just feel he's going to have a good year. I would take be taking more of a chance to say where he's going to end up. But if I had to, I would say Denver. Or Washington is where he's going to end up. Although he'd be a really good fit in San Francisco, just telling you the truth, because he's better than Trey Lance. But go ahead. Who's your number five? I swear I hate to say it on the show. It's Trevor Lawrence. Ha! Oh, I knew it was coming. <clears throat> here's where I say this. I was a year too late, or too early. That's all. Here's how. I, here's where I say this, because he can only go where? Up. 12 touchdowns and 18 interceptions. And he's and he's actually got a solid head coach. Reminded he, me of Peyton Manning. He's got the guy who I said should have been got that job yeah. in Doug Peterson. We were right. Jim Caldwell. He's got a you know he's got a coach who 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 molded Carson with you know his first couple of years in you know what I'm saying they were in the league, who's a professional who knows how to run a locker room, and who's not going to be at the strip club. Right. And, you know what I'm saying they're missing team planes. And sometimes all a player needs is a guy he knows got his back and does. You That's know, right. Um. 
Oh, excuse me. You know who's an adult in the room? Hey, per se. You know who Peterson reminds me of? Who? His coach at Clemson. Dabo Swinney. He even look like Dabo a little bit. He. They remind me of one another. I can see that. I think it's going to be a great fit. I think you made a good pick. My only concern is you put him too far up the list. Well, he's he number need, five for me. Yeah, he need to be. That's one of me. He's he you ranked him too low. I guess I should say on the list. I think he he's going to be more of a breakout player than some of the people that you you probably have listed ahead of him. Very well could be. No, very well could be. Uh, are we still talking about Trevor Lawrence? We yes. are. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, number four, my breakout number four player <laughs> last year. Oh, God bless me. I think my second pick was a wide receiver, was it not? Uh, no, it was Montez Sweat. Montez Sweat, okay. Well, this year it's going to be a wide receiver. Okay, who you got? Amon Ra, St. Brown. <laughs> Say his full name. <laughs> I, man, that's, it's like that long. I haven't got eight minutes. Yeah. Look. It really would take me about eight <laughs> minutes. Good night. His stats last year, 90 receptions, just over 900 yards. Out with, of nowhere. With he Jared Goff. Yeah, he was a fourth-round pick out of USC, by the First way. First year. Coach and Dan Campbell with Jared Goff at quarterback. With one year under Dan Campbell's belt, that team improved game after game after game after game. I think every player improved throughout the season. He's a coach's coach. I think he's going to continue Good. to help God. make Mr. Amon Ra Julian Hiru Jr. St. Brown. I hope I said that third <sighs> middle name right. I think he's going to be very Jeff, uh, Justin Jefferson-like. Not in size, but in in stats this year. I think either. he's going to be twelve hundred yards plus receiving. Yeah, Bob, I'd go Bob, by Haru if I was him. Haru, that's yeah, just that's. But I, I like. I mean, I, I'm in Ross cool too though. That sounds bad, dude. That sounds like that is fair. I'm in Ross, and like he come on very late last year. Like the start of the year, he was kind of suspect hit and miss, but he's also a rookie, and for his sake, he was playing with Jared Goff, and he was also playing on the Lions. Who, who I think if they find a quarterback this year, can make a move. Or if they just invest around the quarterback. That's somebody else that's be looking at Mr. Trubisky as the daggone lines, boy. I that would be that. a fit. I wholeheartedly agree with he would be an upgrade over Jared Goff, but so would you and I. And Mitch Trubisky reminds me of like a better version of Joy Harrington who had some success there. Just want to leave that there. You ain't got to be good to play in Detroit. Like, you just can't be, like, terrible. Now, golf right. wasn't bad, 19 touchdowns, eight interceptions, but. He just didn't have that it. Yeah. But you know what? Maybe he, too, needed this season. I, look, and Dan Campbell, I trust. That's all I'm going to say. Hey, I will say that. That's one last year that you hit the head on that I just flat out missed. Wow. Dan Campbell. Everybody, don't, I, yeah, don't, don't feel bad. They everybody all, everybody was, was laughing. Who is this guy? <coughs> Who, why is a tight end coach get to be head coach of an NFL team? Because. Obviously, somebody hung around this guy knew what yeah. type of passion and drive and personality he had. And that's what's been missing in a lot of these NFL coaches. And he brung it. Well, he was excited to watch on the sidelines. He made headlines for all the right reasons. He's tough, man. He's tough. Even when they were losing, you were pulling for him. And, and they took some heartbreakers last year, man. What they did, about one possession of when having a first-year head coach and a quarterback who's not that good, if you get in a coach – Who's got a little bit more experience mm. up under his belt, along with you know, hey, maybe a better quarterback, and maybe honestly a couple more weapons around him that would also elevate Jared Goff a little bit. But now, uh, now my next breakout player is Tony Pollard. I okay, feel like he come on strong um, hey, this year, and I feel like Ezekiel Elliott is is uh, he's proven why I've stated time. Him and Christian McCaffrey are case in point of why you do not pay tailbacks a huge second contract. It hampers the rest of your team, and these guys who are used in like this often get hurt. Yeah. Now the Colts are going to have a you know what I'm saying a um a scheme of you know hey this issue coming up with Jonathan Taylor. We don't use Taylor as often as Zeke. And nobody uses anybody as much as you know what I'm saying the Panthers use Christian McCaffrey. That's the except problem. Except me a fork. That's the problem. You could pay Christian McCaffrey if you didn't use him on every play. My God. Yeah, that's. I yeah, mean, they might as well ask him to play defense. Yeah, if he's in for thirteen plays, he's getting at least eleven touches. It sometimes eight in a row. But, um, you know, having Ezekiel Elliott, who's kind of on a downhill slope his career, and having an offensive coordinator who likes a two back set anyway, doing Kellen Moore, I kind of feel like you, you know, hey, this may be Tony Pollard's year to just ease on into you know hey, RB one status. So, first off, I like that graphic there. Chris. I do. Yeah, that's kind of good job. Uh, he's the best. Yeah, he's good. Here's my thing, though. 
I like Tony Pollard. I said last year they should start Tony Pollard over Ezekiel Elliott. Yeah, you did. Everybody argue with me. Tony Pollard's a better back. Yeah. But here's the problem. You didn't pay The reason he ain't going to be a breakout player is because Dallas ain't going to move off Zeke. They proved it this year. Yeah. When he wasn't producing, they kept running him. And it makes no sense. I'm all right with you paying the guy money. But the second he ain't producing, admit your mistake and move on. Go to Pollard. Now, if they're smart, Pollard will come out and be number one back. Number one back right now, and I will hate it. I actually admire Kellen Moore and all the bunch out there. McCarthy, all of them. Thank you for being stupid. I mean, not that Zeke Because they could, have been a, they could have been a truly well-rounded football team with that line, those receivers, Dak at quarterback, and, and Pollard at tailback carrying the majority of the load. I mean, he, I mean, you know what I'm saying? No, Zeke didn't have a bad year. Thousand yards and ten touchdowns, but how many carries he have? Uh, two hundred and thirty-seven. Yeah. So how many yards he average? Like four. That's yeah. not bad. And point two. And Pollard but behind five. the best, but behind the best line, bro. Yeah. yeah, but Pollard averaged five and a half. Now do with that what you will. Yeah. Thank you. Moving on. Last year, my picks. I took a rookie. Coming up from the draft. This year, I'm doing the same thing. And my third pick, my number three breakout player of the year, which honestly, I probably should have had him at five, but I'm so unsure now. Garner Miss, you left a bad taste in my mouth because of him not being able to start. Uh, and so I'm worried about that with Mitch Trubisky. But my number five is a rookie, uh, Tayson Thornton. And I hope I'm saying that. Sorry, take Taquan Thornton. My bad. And this is why everybody knows what I love in a wide receiver. There's one word. You were Al Davis. Speed. speed, baby. Give me speed. And this guy has got all that in his son. Got it. His time. unofficial time Ooh. beat John Ross. Ooh. John Ross, if you remember, had the 4 2 2. He <laughs> ran a 4 2 1 in the 40 and then run a 4 2 8. He's Bo- 6 foot 3. Both of them was under four, was sub 4 3. Both of his 40s. John Ross ain't 6 foot 3. Here, yeah. If he ain't 6 foot 3. three out of this guy. Is going to be the next Jamar Chase, in my opinion. He had 62 receptions, 948 yards, and 10 touchdowns in university. He gets the right coach. He gets on the right team. You, I'll tell you right now, you give Trevor Lawrence this guy, you give Joe Burrow this guy, not that Joe Burrow needs anybody else. You don't. If Justin Herbert says to, is smart to his team, they said, go get this guy. If Washington's smart, we get rid of Samuels, we trade Samuels out, we go get this guy, we going to be rolling. Whoever picks up this guy is going to get a number one wide receiver in two to three years. This year he's going to be an excellent number two. He What he did in college was he was everything that I liked about Ruggs. He was big time, big play, deep ball receiver. He stretched every team vertically that allowed you to play the zone pass and zone run underneath. This is who every team needs. Tyreek who? Tyreek 5'10 who? No, give me this guy who's faster than Tyreek and a 6'3. This is who I want on my team. Go ahead. What's your thoughts? That's a tall, fast young man. Yes, he is. But, you know, see, he got, you know, he both the traits I've always wanted, height and speed. And I just got short and slow. Uh, my number three break, uh, hey, breakout player is Rashad Bateman. He was the first round pick last year. He's gonna be good. Minnesota, right? Was his where he went and played at uh, university? Uh, some, yeah, you know, I think he's University of Minnesota. You might be right on that. Yeah. He was the first round pick. He's he was like be number twenty eight or so. Yeah, and he, you know, he was hurt early on in the year, but coming down the stretch, he played very well. Yeah. Um. Yeah, he did play it. Yes, Jason in yeah. Minnesota. Yeah, he's good. He's a big body. He's and yeah. That's that's what quarterbacks like Cam Newton and you know what I'm saying the Lamar Jackson need who are not that most. That's why Cam Newton loved Kelvin Benjamin and Greg Olson. They were big bodies. You know what I'm saying they were the huge catch radius. Yes. And yeah. Bateman had a pretty solid year. He only got on the board you know hey one time, but he like I said, it was 500 yards, and he was hurt a majority of the year. Yeah. Jackson basically just needs a second and third weapon. You know, hey, Mark Andrew just target one, two, and three for him. You know, hey, Marquise Brown had a really good break at you last year. He's the speedster guy. If Bateman can come opposite him, just become the – Be that possession hey, receiver. CJ, yeah. you know, um, oh, what's the guy that played opposite of Chad Johnson? Um, oh, 
Oh, you talking about the no, uh, Hushmanzada? Yeah, Hushmanzada. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say the uh, Arabic guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. He was. If he could just play opposite of him in that manner, that's gonna be a really good year. Yeah, he was good. Yeah, yeah. This guy, if he can come in and be a possession target, yeah, he's gonna be good. I like Baden. That's a good pick, Brennan. Yep. That's a good daggone pick right there. My number four. You already said his Which name. Which is technically your number two, right? Yeah, my number yeah, two. Yeah. Sorry. My number two pick. That's right. Thank you. That's why, Chris, that's why you're the smart one here. Thank you. you got all the math and stuff. Yeah. My number two, Brandon's already said. This is where I, I thought Brandon made a good pick, but he picked him way too early. Trevor Lawrence. New coach. You can see Chris having an aneurysm over there, like in real time. You see his brain just. I don't know what Chris's problem is with Trevor. Trevor was hold the on. greatest quarterback to ever play the game up through college. His existence. Hey, hold on real quick. That's a good point. Chris, hey, can we give you just a half a minute? Yeah. To just explain your your disappreciation, if that's even really a word. Your your hatred is what I'm looking for. Hey, for Trevor Lawrence. And why you dislike Jar Jar Binks so much. I'm trying to get Okay. Uh how can I put this? <laughs> Time's up. No, just <laughs> Re- reason number one is about the it, there it is. That's reason one. Okay. <laughs> He just hates his face. <laughs> Reason two, I just think he sucks as a quarterback. It, it, it was all this hype and yeah. no production. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, well, what? Peyton Manning didn't produce his first year either. Yeah. I didn't say Tom I liked Brady him didn't either. have his produ- production. And nobody from. likes him. Yeah. Everybody <laughs> likes him now. You had me, uh. then you lost me, then you had me. <laughs> <laughs> it's highs yeah. and lows on this yeah. show. But look, I, I think, I, I don't know, man. I don't understand your dislike for him, Chris. He was the most highly productive, number one quarterback, best quarterback to ever play the game through college. Uh-huh. And he's going NFL's to. NFL's a different game. It is, but. And unfortunately, you that young man, yeah, he where walked he into a horrible situation. Who he had as his first year head coach. And that's like I said, like, I think Doug Peterson coming in is going to change that entire franchise. I don't think you're going to recognize that franchise this year. I, I hope that's not the case, though, for my sake. I don't think you're going to recognize it. I said the same thing last year, though, but I, and I put too much faith in uh, Mr. Lapdance himself. Didn't we all? But I do think it's going to change this year. I've seen Peterson coach at the NFL level. I saw what he did with Philadelphia. I saw what he did with Carson Wentz, who is not as talented of a quarterback. Although he's good, he's nowhere near as talented as Trevor Lawrence. This year is Trevor Lawrence's year. Be ready for a breakout season. I'm thinking 35-plus touchdowns, 10 or less interceptions. Who <laughs> he's talking major breakout. Breakout. All right. And I got the guy who was picked uh at third in the draft last year in Trey Lance. Oh God. I think that well Mr. No Field. Yeah, you're right. He if we're going based off last year's stats, Brandon, you're absolutely right. And he's he played with me. <laughs> and he played with me. His stats are definitely gonna improve from last year. But you're cheating you, thing, man. No, but Jimmy G is already out the door. Like yeah, him okay. and John Lynch have met and they have mutually, you know, had discussed a um trade. So Jimmy G's gone. And I think Trey Lance is gonna come out there with George Kittle, Elijah Mitchell, Debo Samuel. I don't think Trey Lance is gonna be Hey, uh, the Colin Kaepernick esque in his no. first year in San Francisco because Colin no. Kaepernick was the ball. All you may hate yeah. about him though for elsewhere. Yeah, that he was first a good quarterback. Year, yeah, he was in San Francisco with a uh, Harbaugh. He set the league on fire. Yes. Green Bay Packers have nightmares on, a, on yes. the read option in their sleep at Lambeau yes. Field. Yes, but I do feel like Trey Lance. You know, he gives him a little bit more downfield, uh, throwing ability, and he's definitely more mobile um, than Jimmy G. Because hey, me and Chris are listen to me, but. I do feel like having Kyle Shanahan as your head coach is also a very good advantage to have. Brandon, listen to what I'm about to say to you. Hey, okay, talk to me, nephew. You're right that his stats are going to improve. <laughs> I don't think that should count as breakout. What I will say this, okay. and I have not said this ever before, prepare yourselves. I hope everybody's sitting down. I if am. I had to choose between Trey Lance and Tua Tagalova, I'm trading for Tua Tagalova. Taco Viloyeva. I mean, I mean, taco. Hands down. From Hawaii. Wrong. All day. They drafted this kid off of one college season. Oof. One college season. I'd like to know who he knows. And that season wasn't even a great season. And it was, no, and half the players weren't even. I'd like to know who this kid knows. You don't know what I found funny, too, though? Is that Kyle Shanahan was basically like, you know, uh, uh, the kind of cyber bullied into taking Trey Lance. And he, and he didn't really even w- play him when he. Uh, and he's he really already wanted said. Mac. Mm-mm. Yeah, and he really wanted Mac Jones. That's the part that it kind of bothers me about fans sometimes, where it's like Mac Jones looked really good with Bill Belichick. Imagine how good he looked with somebody that can, you know, call an offense. 
But I'm, tell, I'm telling you, man, look at me. I am. I would get rid of if I if Trey Lance is going to be my quarterback, I would trade for Tua Tagalova. You would never hear me say that about anybody. I would take Drew Lock Chris, over is there Tua. Any way you could screen or like, Ooh. like pull that at some point, like just in case Trey Lance has a break a year periodically, I just play that. <laughs> I could be wrong. <laughs> I yeah, could be wrong. Work that out. I just he played at a no name school. He played for less than one full season. Yeah. He got drafted off of this season, and I don't understand why. He hasn't shown anything in the time he had on the field when he was in the NFL so far. And all these people just keep making excuses for him. Man, I pick around on Lamar Jack. I pick on Tua Tagalov. I would take those guys. I would I would, I would take. Here we go. Worse than Tua Tagalov. I would take Dwayne Haskins Trevor Lawrence. Oh. over this guy. Just Go give me crap. Dwayne Haskins. Stop. At least I know what I got. This guy you don't even know. You don't even know. And the people who do know didn't play him. Who? Just saying. <laughs> who? That's, that's one of my favorite ones I sent you. It, it, it was very short and concise. Who? Who? <laughs> Last pick. My number one pick for for not only... Breakout season, but this is going to be my pick market for comeback player of the year. J.C. Horn, North Carolina, or Carolina Panthers. I'm sorry, South Carolina. I mean to do you like that. J.C. Horn, last year in his first three games, he allowed one catch, and he got one interception, and then he got hurt. Hey, I he like was out. balling out. I was so high on this dude pre-draft last year. He was my number one ranked corner. I was like, J.C. Horn of a Pat Sertan. J.C. Horn of a – now, Pat Sertan is phenomenal. Yeah. With all due respect to Pat Sertan, that dude had a phenomenal rookie year in Denver. But J.C. Horn – I'm telling you. That's going to – That's going to be my breakout player. I made one defensive pick last that's year. That's sneaky. I'm making you, one defensive pick this year. That's sneaky. I didn't think I'm about gonna the go, I'm telling you, I'm that's going good. on a limb here. Dude's going to have five-plus interceptions, and he's only going to allow for, like, 20 catches all year. And they ain't going to be – I mean, there's going to be cheap catches. 20, 25 cheap catches, yeah. fourth quarter, throw underneath type catches. Yeah. Drag route, yeah. slant. Yeah, they ain't going to be no – down 10 points. I don't think he gets beat one time deep all yeah. year. He's I don't so think good. anybody throws the ball over him. Now, I could be wrong. Go out there and get 17 touchdowns <laughs> through on him. Cause I, but I, I just – the kid – no, he's a man. That dude, I like him. Yeah, I do too. My my I number agree. one breakthrough player of the year, J.C. Horn. That was a good pick by you, man. I actually like that pick. I did not actually, you know, have you picking a defensive guy. Yeah. Um, I always try to sneak one in there. Yeah, we're definitely going to be able to see him a lot here at the house. Um, you know what I'm saying, though? I would, look, I'd like to say Michael Parsons, but I have a hard time seeing anybody replicate what he did. So, J.C. Horn it is, baby. Yeah, God, boy, Michael Parsons, of all the jokes I make about Dallas, he's the best player on mm, Dallas. Best player in it. Probably the NFC. I'm just gonna throw it out there. I think all around you may have a outside of Aaron Donald. I think he's better than Aaron Donald at this point. You may have a legit, yeah, but that's just because you know he's a little older. Yep. I think he's better than Aaron Donald was when he's yeah. dude. That dude's a beat, bro. He played three or four positions this year. Yeah, we were also very high on him pre-draft last yeah. year, though. And next week is gonna be our draft show yeah. where we start breaking down. You know, what I'm saying? yeah, Michael was a, position. Could you just imagine if he'd got to go to? Mm. I think if that dude had played last year, he'd have been a top five pick. But he didn't play. He skipped out due to COVID. And, well, you know what I'm saying? The rest is history. Dallas, y'all had a Hall of Famer fall into your lap again. But they traded up for him. Yeah. Um, and then with the Eagles swap. And they, really, the both teams. was a bright fared, move. Well, actually, both teams fared out pretty well. You know, um, had the Eagles got to Devontae Smith out of Alabama, who's the number one, you know, had de facto receiver at this point. Yeah, there. Devontae Smith did all right. Not as good as Michael Parsons, but hey, once again, who yeah. did have that good of a rookie year? Not Trevor Lawrence, Chris. But though, Javante Williams, he's my breakout player of the year. He's going to be number one for me. The Denver Broncos running back. I feel like at some point, um, hey, fumbling at the five, Melvin Gordon has got to go. He's out. He's going to free agency. And I feel like having having a head coach who's going to come in and, you know, um, excuse me, try to run the ball a little bit. Um, you know, he was an explosive back at Carolina, him and Michael Carter, who's now a New York Jet team up at Carolina, helped Sam Howell raise his draft stock a couple of years ago. If he's a number one back, he's going to be a top five back in fantasy football. Plain and simple. Just because they don't trust those two. Now, if Aaron Rodgers gets there, you really got something on your hands. You know, because they're going to, don't let Aaron beat me. And, uh, you know, he comes, with, you know what I'm saying, to a five-man box or something, just hand out, you know, hand it off, you know what I'm saying, to hit Williams on the dives and whatnot. But, you know, I feel like coming in, he, if he is RB1 and Melvin Gordon's gone, he's going to have like nine, 
Easily nine touchdowns and 1,100 yards on the ground. Melvin Gordon, yards last year. Melvin Gordon, they are not. Javante Williams is going to be number one RB1. I think Melvin Gordon's out the door in free agency. I'm a little scared that you made this pick because this was my honorable mention pick. Okay, I'm sorry. I, You know, he had like 903 rushing yards last year, I think is what it was. Yep. I think he's going to have a 1,200-yard rushing season. I would not be surprised if he's running back one. I'm just, I, not, I not 1,200 yards, well, 10 him touchdowns. Mel- him and Melvin Gordon have both had 900 yards. Yeah. And so if you RB one, that's eight. That's nine hundred yards. You know, saying so no production up for grabs. If you're not really splitting yeah. the backfield like that, you get easily a couple hundred of those. You know, nine hundred yards. Yeah, because yeah. I was gonna rip. say I think some of it goes to the difference of the back that that sets the defense off and having yeah. to adjust when they're in there. But yeah, no, I I, I think twelve hundred plus yards, 10, 10 touchdowns, 10, 11 touchdowns. It's gonna be his year. I, I think. Um, Man, yeah, he he was my honorable mention. He could have very easily been in the top five breakout yep. players for me. I just I wanted to try to mirror my picks from last year, uh, but you're right, he probably should have been on my top five. But I did have him right here. You'll see, uh, just for uh, you know proof, he was my honorable mention. Yes, he did. He said Melvin Gordon is retiring. Yeah, so he could be. Yeah, but uh, who is your one pick who worries you a little bit? Like you know, you're like okay, that. Well, that, do you have an honorable mention? Nah, I don't. Oh, shame. All right, go ahead. I, you know what? I give you Jameis Winston again, just to go two for two. <laughs> the, no I coach. J-Bow 13. No, no coach. coach. I don't think that's going to happen. Jameis Winston ain't got a job. I think he's technically a free agent at this point. Uh, yeah, that ain't going to work. It ain't. Uh, if I had to say one one player I'm worried about, it would be between Mitch Trubisky and, and Tyquan Thornton. But yeah. if I had to choose who's the one pick I'm concerned about that I could easily put Javante Williams in over, it would be Mitch Trubisky just yeah. because – you know, due to where he's you don't land. know where he's yeah. going to land. Yeah, but I do think Trubisky's going to land, and that's why I ended up putting him there. And I do think he's going to land on a team that he can make a difference. There's a couple teams yeah. that are on the cusp of being really good football teams. People can get laugh at me all they want. Denver with yeah. a quarterback can I win. Agree. Washington, I think whether it's Heine or somebody like Mitch, and just a little bit of something something on the defense secondary, they can be a great team. Philadelphia could be a great team. The Colts could be a great team. Yeah. Any one of these guys would benefit from Mitch Trubisky. Yeah. Oh, I wholeheartedly agree. I'll be honest with you. Cleveland Browns would Yo, benefit I from Mitch Trubisky. That, that may be the move to make. I mean, dude, because you, you got the best backfield. Well, one of the best backfields in the game. You're getting a bigger quarterback who's more mobile, though, with a better arm, who's not a head case, who's not doing commercials. Right. I mean – and, 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 and plays the win. And you don't have to extend this contract. No. You know, Baker's played on a one-year approval deal right now, though, and they've already said, hey, hey, dog, hey, we're not paying you yet. The only problem is you've got Case Keenum behind him, and that's the only thing I don't see Cleveland doing is they already got the backup quarterbacks better than the starting quarterback. Yeah. Case Keenum is a better quarterback than Baker Mayfield. And people sleep on how good the Case Keenum really is. Case Keenum's is. great. It bothers me As so much bad. as I like Kirk Cousins, Case Keenum got the Minnesota Vikings to the playoffs. I don't leave that alone. I mean, I was going. I mean, I was going to be happy to point that out, though. But you did it for me. I, just, I, I think Kurt's a better quarterback, but Case Keenum has a little something, something in the tank, man. He I don't do know. though. He do. I don't know. But hey, man, you know it's Ooh. that time, B. It do be that time. Sad. I'm sad, man. I mean, not as sad as I was last night, but I'm sad. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, you gonna say bye? Yeah, Carolina fans, and I hope you wake up on uh, Monday with diarrhea. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just playing, man. <laughs> Yeah, well, I ain't. So <laughs> he said, I ain't. <laughs> we'll see you guys next week. Same time, same place at Next Door Radio, nextdoorradio.com. I want to say thank you to Vanco Outdoor Power Equipment for sponsoring this hour of third and eight. Guys, check us out on our website, www.americanpodtalk.com or www.thirdandeight.com or on our Facebook page. Check out some of our merch. Help us out. Buy some. Wear some gear around. You'll look really flashy in it, man. I'm telling you, some hot stuff on there. Check us out. See you guys next week. This has been an American Pod Talk production. For more content, please visit us online at www.americanpodtalk.com.